Hi, everybody. It is September 21st, 2022. My name is Steve Hodgden with Modern Asset Management. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, buying notes. So I'm going to. Whoops. Put up my official uh, starting uh, page, should you invest in mortgage notes and how to look at tapes. Um, in, the, in the space where notes are available to, um, to uh, regular folk, um, they go through brokers and, uh, and they're typically swapped around on a thing you know, from the old fashioned days. It's a tape, it's an Excel file. And we're going to go through uh, one of some loans that I have that are at a loan servicer called Security National, who I think does a wonderful job, um, but good gracious, are they expensive. Um, so it's, uh, I can't make a recommendation for an entry level uh, note investor to, uh, to start there. Um, I'm going to move some windows. I think I'll close us for a minute. And there. And I'm gonna stop my share for just a moment and and go over here to an Excel sheet. And I'm gonna share the Excel sheet. Okay. So um Ivar, your job here is to stop me, ask questions. If I gloss over something that we don't get, let's go back and look at it. Um, but what we have are the remaining six accounts of 26 accounts that I boarded, uh, that I purchased um, seven years ago now. Um, seven years ago, I bought 36 mortgage notes from various sources. Um, and most of them I went, I boarded at Security National. And we're going to go through what you get when somebody says, I want to buy accounts. Um, you want, you get, you get a spreadsheet that goes on forever. Um, that big enough for folks to see? Somebody say yes. 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 Thank you. All right. So has the loan been modified? Um, what I bought was um, I bought a package of loans that had that after the so in 2010, when everything 2009 and 10, when everything collapsed, a bunch of people got behind. Notes were available just so cheap. Um, we were, I was working with a debt buyer at the time. We were buying second mortgages for five cents on the dollar. And I was treating, I was the collection manager and I was treating them like they were unsecured credit cards. I had no idea what I had. I had no idea. Um, if we had just sat on those, oh my goodness. But anyway, this company bought a bunch of defaulted mortgages, went out to the consumers and rewrote new loans for half of the balance at a 10% at a 10% interest rate. So they offered people a 50% discount and then gave them typically a 15 year 10% interest loan. Um, many of them performed, many of them um, refied out, some houses got sold, a couple went into default, and I've kept some of the trouble ones and a couple of the good ones. So the modifications were done in 2012. This one's a whole story in herself, this foreclosure down here. Um, and it'll tell you things. It'll tell you conventional or HELOC, that kind of thing. It'll tell you if it's fixed or variable, all that kind of thing. You go on and on and on. Um, is it in an interest, is it in an interest only uh, status, some sort of uh, uh, modification? We've got an original loan amount, an original interest rate, the loan term. The original principal and interest, if there's a balloon. When the original note was written, the maturity date, paid through date. Pay attention to this. This tells you if there's arrears. 
This one has arrears. This one's got four years, four and a half years of back payments. Steve, a quick question. That yep. uh, maturity date, is that the revised maturity date or was it when it was restructured, was it kept to the same maturity date? And you have to pay attention to that. In this case, it's the, it's the actual maturity date. So sometimes that may that may not be that may not be the case. So loans will get extended. Um, principal will be put on the back end. A lot of that happened. Um, the reason that this is uh, interesting to me again is there's going to be people that are underwater who have three and a half percent mortgages, and I'm interested in buying that mortgage directly from the from the homeowner um, in an, any number of different ways. Because the real value is three and a half percent money in a land where now now federal funds, you know, federal mortgage is six and a half on its way to um, again, I turned down going to that thing, uh, going making that speaking to that panel because I would have said, yeah, mortgage rates are going to be nine. Um, why is nine the number? I had a mortgage that was 13%. I know people that have mortgages at 18%. I've borrowed money at 30%. I, I write loans all the time at 29.9. Um, so, uh, so this one's got some late charges. Um, let me keep rolling along. I took out the, uh, took out the name. Um, we have cell phones. It goes on and on and on. If there's a credit score to be here and a date. Um, depending on where you're buying in the food chain of notes, you may have some of that information. You get more and more and more, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, finally, you get out here in BO and you get to where is the property, right? We're going to keep going past that. It'll be a property class. It'll tell you whether it's owner occupied. Um, appraisal values, BPOs, a broker price opinion. Um, those of us that uh, have been around the appraisal business, uh, business um, don't take much stock in broker price opinions. Um, I don't take much stock in realtor opinions because I was a realtor for a little while and I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, uh, Ladesha, who's on this call, does BPOs um, and it's a, a desktop appraisal. It's, you know, it's, it's, you haven't seen inside, so you don't really know. Um, right. So the philosophical point I have on that is the borrower always looks like the house and the inside of the house always looks like the mortgage payments. So if you, you know, if the, if the house is, you know, if the house is trashed, well, then the borrower is not going to be responsible. Um, but every now and then a perfectly, you know, little white picket fence house will be destroyed inside. I had I had one of those in, in uh, outside of Cleveland that was just, it was tragic. It was tragic. Um, she had had an upstairs toilet leak and didn't, ten, didn't attend to it. And it leaked into the, and the so the, the seal in the bathroom and the bathtub, the toilet was gone and it was leaking into the kitchen. You know, and this woman was living there, unable to make her payments. We finally got to talk to her and helped her move out. So, um, delinquent taxes are a big deal, right? So, um, you, uh, we don't own anything. The government does. So, don't pay the taxes. And that's what you and you'll find out. I buy tax deeds. So this one's got its own noise going through here. Uh, these are the remaining payoffs. Um, we'll have some notes. We'll keep going. And this is the juicy stuff. This is the payment string. So if you know the date from way, way back there on the left, you can come out here and see what the payment string was. If, the, if this tape, this tape was new, so it should be a September reporting, right? So this is... August, July, June, May, going back. And Ivar, you liked this one, right? Because it was paying every month. Sure, yeah, exactly. That was my favorite. Right? Yeah. And, and it should be, if that's what you want. Right? I'm looking for 
I'm I'm going to be on the hunt for sloppy delinquent accounts in places where I have uh, boots on the ground that can do something with it. Um, Ladesha is going to get some. Ladesha is going to get some more trouble uh, dropped in her lap. Um, <laughs> so so let's go look at this one. This is 24 months never missed a payment. Right. This one here, this fourth one down, is uh, is a good one too. This one here you'll see 621 and then doubles up, doubles up, um, doubles up, covering up for these, catching up on these gaps here, this gap there. Um, I don't mind if I'm self-managing, I don't mind occasional misses. Um, most of the notes will carry a 10% uh, premium on the payment. So if the payment was 500, they owe you 550 and you know that's okay. Um, I find that... Uh, but I find that I will advise against self-managing. Um, we have we're a, our business is a lending business, and we have a machine that takes everything. Uh, but the stuff that gets in my hands, I'm just I'm just a cupcake. I, you know, I, even after thirty years actively operating collection uh, floors, I've become just I I, you know, I'm hopeless. So. Anyway, um, so we're going to come look at what can we find out about way, 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 601 White Street in Shirley, Indiana. So I'm going to change screens. And... I went to... Google Earth dropped in the address, and I get this little town, and her house is right here. We'll zoom out first. This is fairly typical of what becomes available to those of us that are looking for small dollar accounts. You're either going to find a property in a blighted neighborhood or a rural neighborhood or an inner city neighborhood. Um, there's places where you want to play and places where you don't, depending on what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, I do not want to own anything in Chicago because it's just really hard to enforce anything in Chicago. Um, I want to own prop. I want to own notes in Louisiana because I've got somebody in Louisiana. Um, Ladesha and I met through a foreclosure that I did. All right. This is farmland. Way, way, way down here. There's a little house and a little neighborhood. And if we went and did a street view. We'd, uh, I would suggest that you drive up and down the street using Google Maps and see. But uh, this is, this makes sense. The downside is, is there may not be much of a real estate market if we have a collapse, right? If she walks away from this mortgage, who's going to buy it? Um, I like to go to city da city dash data. I'm going to change screens. Um. Okay. Um, we got a thousand people in that town. This is very rural. Uh, this is reasonable uh, income um, per capita, though. Twenty-one thousand estimated home values in that area. Eighty-six thousand. That's pretty. That's pretty light, right? Um, and we're out here in. Looking to see for a bigger city. I can't see there. I think we're, I think we are south 
east looks looking. like you're east of indy yeah yeah so this is so this is you know this is little small town america right um this person owns his home and is very likely to uh, to be paid to go all the way to pay it off you know so um go back to the tape no i don't want to go back to the tape i want to go back to the uh I'll go back to the Google Earth and again, drilling all the way down. And again, I like to use Google Maps. Oh, I also pulled up a Zillow. Can I show you that? Okay. Um, see this little thing up here, priced. Uh, this is a vendor that we've been been using um, for comparisons. And they do, they do, they have a they're a combination of data tree and uh, like Zillow. All right. So little house. Go. It's I'm okay with this. Um, Ivor, I think uh, Ivor, I think this is a good loan to buy. <laughs> good loan to buy. Uh, compared to some of the compared to some of the junk that's left in that uh, uh, file. Um, so I'll go back here. Not just a sales pitch. No, this is not. This is expressly not a sales pitch. Um, so um, let me see. Would you that. would you comp out the other houses in the area to know like okay yeah. if she defaults. Like, can yeah, I? So, so let's pick up how much she owes. Back in two thousand three, mm -hmm. um, am I on the oh, am I on the right screen? Do we see the? Steve, can we can we just go back a second? Yeah. Um, yep. This is Zillow issue. Um, because of my past experience of you know, too many years that I can remember, Zillow reliability is questionable. We, we've just done a whole load of series of court cases, mm -hmm. and we argued that Zillow should be thrown out and the yes. judge went with it because they're stating that their algorithm is only 30% accurate. In fact, in their books to the realtors, any, any agent or anybody that's using it, they specifically state that you cannot use Zillow for the basis of a real estate transaction. Um, how much reliance are we placing on Zillow? Um, so, uh, so, um, so I'm going to Zillow for ease. I'm um, a Zestimate is a, is worse than a BPO. As a BPO is kind of a Zestimate, but from somebody local. Um, but uh, you you've been an appraiser, so you you must hang on to that. An appraisal is an appraisal is an appraisal. Everything else is uh, rubbish. Um, mm -hmm. Looking for the looking for the balance. Oh, she's down to she's down to nothing. Uh, so it's just one more one more source to throw into the mix to see. Yeah. Where so um, it's a it is it's like using FICO to make a credit decision. It's a it's a quick it's a quick snapshot. Um, I want to go find my Zillow screen um, and show you what I do. Um, new share there. Um, yeah, I would I would just go with sold within the last right. month. That's because right. Because the market's too soft. I wouldn't even go more than a month back now. Now we're going to find with her that there isn't there isn't enough activity in the uh, in the last month. So little two bed uh, recorded as a two bed one bath thirteen hundred square feet, built in nineteen hundred, and Ladesha who just put a roof on a nineteen sixties house will tell you that oh my good the goodness is there <laughs> maintenance to do there. Um, and so I go, sold, and more, sold and last, 30. So I have, so her house is bigger. We see there's these two, these two recent comps. I got over here, I've got a sold for 59,000 this month. And a sold for 150. That 150 is probably gonna have a bunch of acreage. Um, this lot was a third of an acre, I think. Um, so if you have an estimated value, of just, you know, you've got a comp, it all fixed up for 60,000. Um, and this note is a balance of 5,700. What are the chances of the property going down ninety percent? 
right? So the what's coming is the same sort of stuff that um, probably not as uh, not as bad as what we had in 2009 and 10, where people are upside down, but equity is disappearing, right? So looking for old, the older the loan, the long longer the loan's been paying, the more likely it will continue to pay, right? Unless there's a catastrophic. Mm. Unless issue. there's an event, right? Unless there's an event. And then we have to think about, and we have to think about, well, what could go wrong in Shirley, Indiana? Well, we could have a drought, right? Or we could have crazy rain and heat like they've been having. I've done four sales this year in Southern, uh, Southern Indiana. And one of them was delayed because of uh, for a week because of a storm. They couldn't get they couldn't get on the property. It was uh, some vacant land, you know. So, but that kind of stuff is that kind of stuff, right? So, um, but what can so she's over here. The two souls are over here. I think this is this is more like probably what this house is going to look like. But uh, oh look, you can buy a gymnasium for or somebody bought a gymnasium for three night for three three hundred thousand dollars. But so I've got this little tiny town, and that's and that's the thing, and that goes back to what's available, what's available to us. Um, if this was why has it come out into the tertiary market? Because it's so small and the banks aren't built to handle little things like this. The banks. The banks are handling three hundred thousand uh, dollar average balances, um, and so so what makes this what makes this note? Well, we can keep going out. We can eventually find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm selling uh, hunting land down here, and uh, and I think in Knox. Yeah. So, no, more down this way. We've sold some hunting land down here. But, uh, um, so it's, it's, you know, how do you, well, how do you price it, right? I mean, we know a little bit about it. I'm going to switch back to the Excel. <coughs> I'll go back. So. Oh, shit. We've got a balance of 57. Let's put some number, let's put some numbers in the calculator. 50, whoops, a piece of paper. 54, 77, 66. What did we say her interest rate was? Uh, somebody should get seasick here as I go scrolling by. So here it was originally appraised in 2003 for 84,000. It's got to be worth more than that 20 years later or somewhere in the ballpark. And again, I would bet that having never missed a payment, she she keeps the place up. Current interest rate, 11%. Way back out here. Now I've got somebody who's got to be seasick. I got 351.52. But what I need is I need the P&I. I need the principal and interest. Somebody stop me if I go past it. Two fifty five, two fifty five, seventy four is really what you're buying, because you're not buying the taxes and insurance that are being uh, escrowed, right? Because that's just pa money is passing through your hands. In fact, you're paying the servicer a little extra to do the accounting, collect it, remit the taxes, pay the insurance bill every year, make sure that and and keep that up, and so. Um, 
$1.75 for monthly taxes and insurance. I, we don't have time to dig into what that is. Um, so the principal balance you're buying is $54.24.76. So I would say, I'm gonna do share, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna do a quick commercial for financial calculators, and then I'm gonna plug some numbers into this. Um, I'm gonna say that this note should sell for par because the risk of the asset being less than the property are, it would have to be a nuclear war. Um, that there's at least ten thousand dollars in property value there if the house blew away, right? Probably fifty. Um, you, uh, me, the bill collector wants her to default. I, mean, I want her to default because I want the house back with all that equity in it, right? But that's not going to happen. So I'm going to leave this up here. This was a note that I was working on that I'm gonna buy. Um, my anticipated yield on this is 40%. Yeah, I'm bragging a little bit, all right? So, um, so she was 11. She's five, four, two, four, seven, six with a payment of 255.74. We have 24 months left. We have two years and she will have paid this property off. Steve, yeah. would you actually take out the service charges, you know, $20 a month or whatever? Would you take that out of the payment that yes. you're receiving? As you as you as you as the as the buyer should be figuring should be figuring that out, and you're 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 just one step ahead of. Me. Okay, right? sorry. So, so what do you get out of that? Do you get the two fifty five? No, you get the two fifty five less a servicing fee, less a boarding fee. So if the servicing's eighteen dollars a month, and you had a boarding fee of a hundred and I'll make it easy. I'll make it $200. So let's say it's going to cost you $25 a month. If you paid par, whoops, what did I do wrong? Four. If you wanted to keep an 11% return, then you'd want to pay $5,900, right? Instead of instead of the, so you'd want a $500 discount in order to get your 11% return. Um, Jake, John, uh, Dave Putz over at uh, JKP Holdings was on was on this call month before last, um, and we talked about what pricing is in the marketplace. Uh, JKP Holdings is a uh, debt uh, broker, uh, trainer, uh, everything uh, group in uh, in New Jersey. Um, I like Dave. Um, he's uh, he's just no, just another guy. He's not all flashy and. Uh, um, Selling stuff like some people in uh, in Texas uh, are, and if somebody remember somebody somebody will know who Colonial Capital is and Eddie Speed, and they're the they're I feel like they invented this business, um, but uh, they're 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 sharp they're sharp folks. They're uh, I know I know when I'm I know when I'm talking to somebody. Sometimes I know when I'm talking to somebody that you know is is just knows more than me. Um, so anyway, so I put the note back to where it was. And if you'd want an 11 and a quarter return, you'd pay a little bit less. If you want an 11 quarter return, but you knew that you had a $20 servicing fee, you go 235, 74, minus in the payment, 
Now you're down to, again, 5,000. So again, taking $500 off. With a note this small, <coughs> excuse me, with a note this small, um, you get to a point where it's, it's, not, it's not worth the cost of the transaction. Um, to take this account away from Security National is probably going to cost me $150. Uh, to get it loaded up at another processor, um, was Security National charges $30 for performing loans. Um, they're used to working with big institutional people. And when I started this, you know, those years ago, I was heading toward being a bigger institutional person and, uh, and wound up going back to going back to my knitting, going back to unsecured lending. Um, but anyway, so, um, so my service fee is even higher, right? So my service fee is even higher. Um, so if you do not have a calculator like this, um, please get one. Um, this is from this, this version is on my phone and on my computer and everything else I touch. Uh, the simplest way for me to do that is I start here before I go to uh, 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 internal rate of return tables and Excel and, and doing deep dive stuff. Um, this gets me, this gets me close enough. All right. And so, so I like this loan. I think there's no risk to it at all besides a cataclysmic event. But uh, um, let's look at one that can go e wrong. Even the land value will cover the debt if, the, oh, like you said, by, if the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's there's a, it's more than more than that, right? Um, you know, it's probably you know it's a hundred year it's a hundred year old house. It's probably uh, it's probably you know really cute, and there's some some escapee from Indianapolis that wants to go raise their kids in the farm farm area that'd be happy to buy it and spend their life fixing it up, right? Um, I want to go to so that that's one that's worked out just fine. I want to go to one that didn't. Uh, So look at the locations of these properties. Um, this one in Indy, if we go look at it, we're going to see that it's, uh, it is not in a place that you're uh, you know, going to be all that happy if that's where you were going to live. Um, the Pontiac one is okay. okay. You know, it's all right. Um, Bessemer is the Bessemer, Alabama loan. I will digress to a short story. Father died. Yeah, we're still seeing the calculator. Oh, 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 okay. All right. So let me let me switch share. Um, let's get rid of the calculator. Let's go back to the sheet. Okay. So I was talking through where these were. Right. So what the plan that I had was to buy notes spread out all over the country. I wanted to diversify my risk um, by not being in one place. Thank you, John. Um, why did I do that? In 2006, I bet all my eggs on a shopping center in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, uh, west of Denver. And I was I bought a $5 million project, uh, did a rehab on it. And the uh, in, so I paid 5.4 million in uh, December of 2016, uh, 2006. In March of 2008, it was worth two and a half million dollars. I was 80% empty. I fed that project for eight years. So there I was thinking what I was going to do is I, ret I was retiring. I was going to live on the income of this, uh, of this, of this strip mall. It was 45,000 45, square foot, uh, two buildings. Lovely, perfect, great plan, except the world came to an end. So the world came to an end, construction development completely stopped, and the path of progress stopped about literally about three blocks short of me. It took eight more years for progress to make it to me and a new rail line that had been promised, way, had been in the works for 20 years, finally got opened down the road from this shopping center. And I was able to sell it, make a little bit of money, 
and move on. So my emotional decision was don't make that mistake again. Don't buy a mid-level property and have all your eggs in one basket. So I went out and bought 36 mortgages, right? That wasn't the answer either. What I wound up with is, where am I? I'm in one, two, three, four, five states and six loans here. Right? I, was in, I was in 14 states. 14 states? Maybe more. I'm in 28 states now. Um, and each state has its own particular set of foreclosure rules. They have their own um, issues on uh, tax re uh, payments and all. Every state's got its own different timetable and... And I wound up learning a lot of useless information. Right? Um, a note that's on this list um, is how Ladesha and I got to know each other. And Louisiana has a bunch of French law. I had no idea. I had no idea. Um, and <clears throat> the inheritors of the defaulted mortgage that I was the owner told the succession court Succession court, never heard that phrase anywhere. And again, I've been a legal bill collect, uh, collecting bills through the court system for 30 years. Never heard that phrase. Um, they just said, the judge says, are there any uh, debts owed in the property? I said, no, your honor. They said, okay, it's yours, free and clear. That was it, right? Because nobody showed up to uh, contest that, right? Instead, those people sold me the note. So I still had a lien, it was still recorded, but it was no longer enforceable. <clears throat> to recover that money that I spent for that note, I had to sue all six heirs who lived in different states, seize that property and three others, sell them at a sheriff's sale where I was the high bidder purposely because I wanted to take the properties back and, and deal with them myself. I was going to see this thing all the way through. I wasn't going to let them go for pennies on the dollar. So in that whole process, Ladesha showed up and we've been friends ever since. So that's right. <laughs> um, Bessemer, Alabama. So how did Ladesha help you? How did Ladesha help me? Ladesha yeah. bought four properties. So let's let me get out of this for a second and let's have a little let's have a little talk about that. So Ladesha. Hi, Ladesha. So there's there's Ladesha's picture. Okay, that's your there's there's her headshot. I need a headshot. That's what I need. I need a headshot. Um so, <laughs> so Ladesha, what did you what did I do for you? Well, you were the bank. <laughs> you were the bank. You uh, allowed me to, uh, you, well, you owner financed four properties for me and then gave me the construction loan to do the prop, well, to do the second property mm -hmm. after I did the first one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you were the, the bank. So you were the bank is what you say, how you say it. Okay. And did I do that for free? I'm sorry. Did I do that for free? Yes, to me. No, you paid. No. <laughs> right? So, yeah, yeah. We yeah. refinanced uh, what about a month ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we so we put together we put together a note. And again, <laughs> this is so I've I have come full circle in this eight year journey that I've been on, where I was trying to be an institutional investor, just have money in and out of the bank, do everything in, a, in spreadsheets and Excel and bookkeeping and just not get my hands dirty. And what I found is what I really like is teamwork and building things that, you know, have value and improving stuff and, but not getting, not, but not picking up a hammer because you do not want me to pick up a hammer. You do never want me on the job site. Um, so, but Ladesha is a contractor and a real estate broker. And she has a commitment to her town to try to improve properties there. And she wants to be a landlord. So I want Ladesha to have 10 houses. And I will be her bank until she has 10 houses. 
but I'm not going to do it for free, right? Right. I would. So much- wait, what? What interest do you have? I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm just. No, try- go ahead, go ahead. I'm just trying to totally understand, and I know I'm not going to understand in this in this um, meetup. I'll, I'll have to come back and continue to listen, but what? What skin in the game do you have, Steve, in Ladacia owning 10 properties mm. and um, being her bank? Um, I'm 66 years old and trying to make some impact before I die. Um, I like her um, and I like her especially because she makes her interest payments on time, right? And so um, we have- Somebody like Steve, you know, and that that sees, I mean, just has that type of uh, interest. I mean, that's amazing to me. So I didn't want to let him down for one. Mm-hmm. We, he's become more than just a bank to me. He, he's my friend. Yeah. Steve, are you acting then as a hard money lender on this? So yes, I did. I did. So I sold her. I sold, just to use really rough numbers, um, I sold this little package, um, the originating house, another uh, poor, con- uh, another poor little house, two blank lots for, I think, $68,000. Put them into a, put them into a 10% note. Okay. Took, uh, then she needed capital to do the work. I then used another one of my entities, um, and that entity bought a half interest in what we call Despot, which was house number one, bought a half interest in that in that property with an appreciation uh, clause that said that I put this money in, and when it appraises for a higher amount, I get this, I get a piece of the appra- of the of the improved value. Right. So I was was le- I wasn't interested in collecting ten percent forever. I was interested in getting ten percent and a bonus from the from the house from the property rising. But from yes, the- from the pro- from Ladesha improving the property, putting a good tenant in it, and then qualifying to get a new takeout mortgage from a bank. Mm. Right, that took a couple of years. But what she what she wound up doing is she wound up owning what there's five there's a fifth property that popped on popped in a little while later. Um, she wound up owning four properties with a bank loan on them that is manageable that is paid by the tenants that's ma- that's low enough that the tenants are making the mortgage payments. So she's building equity every every month paying down that mortgage, right? And probably got a couple of bucks in her pocket while she was at it. Right? So right. so I'm this, you know, hard money is one word for it. Private money is a better word because I'm, I didn't charge her points. Um, partner is a good word. Um, and money partner is probably the best definition. So we had, we did a, we did a joint venture um, where I bought, um, I bought another smaller house at a, from a, from a, we bought, there was a, uh, it was a, a bank, a local bank had taken it back. We bought it from them. Ladesha turned it around, rented it out, and I receive half of the net rent of that property after after taxes, insurance, a 10% management fee. We split the rent. Mm-hmm. Right? And she has a payout, another participation payout for that when she can refinance that. What she winds up with is equity, um, that is called sweat equity. She did the work. She found the tenant. She manages the property. She didn't put much of her own cash in. And she then turned turned that into twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in equity. So I want my partner to do better than me. I'm doing just fine, right? If I make 20000 and Ladesha makes fifty, great, Right because I'm going to do it over and over and over again. How does this differ? We're off, tar- we're off topic from the, t- from the tape discussion. How does this differ? The properties are the same, as, same quality, same value that are in this tape that we're looking at, but I have the advantage 
of this lovely woman in the middle who will take care of it if something goes wrong. Mm. Right? So, so I'm like, okay. So it's almost like it. the advantage is for Ladesha being kind of like your eyes and your ears to manage your investment. She Would is that my, be a good That's right. But, she is my, but I want to make sure that she is my partner so mm-hmm. that we both are aligned and want the same and want this and are targeting the same results. Mm-hmm. I want the best possible tenant in a nice clean house that's going to pay Ladesha's mortgage down so we can do this again. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Well, and there's and there's an emotional satisfaction in it that I do not have in this tape, right? In this group, these remaining six accounts. I I've never seen them. I've never talked to the borrower. I it's all at a loan servicer who does what it is that they do. Um, I get a notice every now and then, like, what do you want to do? You ready to foreclose on the Philadelphia one? Well, yes, I am. Um, and the Philadelphia loan, I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to go back to up this uh, chat to check. Um, and John says this, yes, from my original, I bought 20, I bought 26 or 28 from this one source and then, and then some from some other sources. Is this the original 36? Yeah, the original 36 loans, there were about, there were 50,000 plus each on average. So it was, it was a big bet. It was a three quarter of a million dollar bet. And I had this, I had a plan. Yeah, I had a plan. I was going to have a, I was going to have a hundred mortgages, collect a hundred thousand dollars a month. And no, no, I was going to collect $50,000 a month and, you know, go play golf. I don't like golf that much. And it didn't work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and instead I went back to what I knew how to do. And we now have a portfolio of 1500 performing, uh, performing small dollar uh, medical finance loans. And I do some other stuff like this. Um, I'm going to jump to just back to um, things to be wary about. Um, Steve, can I ask another question, please? Please, please. Is um, real estate your form of investment? Do you, um, in this now age and time, uh, wealth preservation is really, uh, people are looking at that a lot. Um, and some people put, you know, put all bets on real estate. Is that, is that your, um, your mind, your mindset on real estate or is other investments, um, um a hedge fund for, uh, wealth preservation? M- well, um, I've never been able to think about preservation. It's just not how I'm, that's just not a, a word for me. Okay. Um, I, so enjoy the the game. It's not work. It's been a game for me forever. I've been a I've I've worked for myself since 1989. Um, the and I've hardly ever had a day where I didn't want to go to work, um, even when things were going terrible. Um, the our core business is um, small dollar lend. My core business is collecting $200 monthly payments. And we, we lend and finance, uh, we finance um, elective surgeries uh, for a medical group. We do some, uh, I do some car, some car note uh, lending. Um, I fund little flipper deals. Um, we, we have, you know, any, any given month, we'll collect a thousand payments. Um, most of that work is outsourced. I said, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing what I've been doing for decades, um, with a little different spin. Um, my real estate, um, I've tried big dollar, fancy real estate, uh, Los Angeles mansions, I've tried shopping centers. Um, I have, I have, uh, some money in very well-managed apartment REITs. Um, my stock portfolio, only gets worse when I look at it. Um, I do not know how to do the stock market. I do not know how to do uh, uh, Bitcoin or any of that stuff. Um, I understand dirt. And if I have to deal with the house that's on the dirt, well, I can deal with that too. But 
I, you know, I, I believe in, I believe in land, um, but it doesn't, is it going to keep up with this potential inflation thing that we're having? Um, I, you know, I didn't speak on that panel because I don't know, likely not, you know, but if, uh, if inflation is 20% and I can make 15%, well, I'm, I'm still in the race. Mm -hmm. Um, the before I cleared my calculator, there was a note that I was buying where my yield is going to be forty percent, and that's got a couple of different pieces of security on it that make it feel like it's going to be a real forty percent. It's not going to go bad, um, and that's a that's a that's a whole other discussion on how to how to do that. And that so what do I have to say about notes? I have to say about notes is your upside is cap is it has a cap, the interest rate, that's as high as it's ever going to get. These notes are average 10 or 11%. That's as high as you're ever going to get in the marketplace to buy a note. And the downside is sometimes more than 10%. This one in Shirley, the downside is time, nothing, right? It's going to be okay. Um, this one here in Devereux, Pennsylvania, this is a duplex where the borrower has bankrupted twice and has, you know, they rolled it into a chapter 13 and they went to a seven and then they came in bed, blah, 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 blah. and he has strung this along for what's his since 2018. Since 2018, right? It's forty-one, forty-two thousand dollars owing on this note. I have a foreclosure sale date coming up. Who knows if he figures out how to go bankrupt a third time to hang on to it? But this is a duplex in a in a crummy duplex in Philadelphia, and he had he is getting rent paid for two plus years and he doesn't have to pay me, right? What's gonna happen? I'm owed $42,000 plus back uh, late fees and interest and all this stuff. It'll be okay someday, but he could stretch this out for another year, right? Somebody is gonna come along and buy this $100,000 $100, asset and I'm gonna get my $42,000. Um, it has cost me $90 a month in servicing fees, right? So um, people, will, people will tell you that the money's in, the money's in, um, in seconds and the money's in buying defaults. And it is, I've been, I've been a defaulted paper buyer for 33 years. I have bought five-year-old payday loans, 10-year-old bank cards. I bought fresh repossession paper. I bought eviction accounts, you know, all that stuff and made a very good living at it. But it's hard work. It is hard work. You're, it's, there's, there's no win-win there, right? Um, Bessemer, Alabama. Borrower is the father. Father passes away. The property is deeded to the daughter. The daughter files bankruptcy. She has it has nothing to do with my property because he she's not the debtor. The, de the deceased father is the debtor. In bankruptcy court, they tell the story to the bankruptcy trustee, and the trustee decides to include it in her mor in the mortgage in her bankruptcy plan. Right? It is completely um, not, <laughs> not the way it's supposed to work. But because I'm in 14 different states, because this is a little $260 a month payment, the cost of me going and finding the right bankruptcy attorney who will go fight this fight, just it's just not worth it, right? Mm. right? So you can see in the pay string, She's got this $260 a month payment. She gets way behind. I go file some paperwork to go and say, give me back the house. I go do the bad thing. 
right? And you know, and so she gets caught up. She makes some payments and gets kind of back on plan. When you're in a chapter 13 plan, as long as you're trying, they're going to let you, the, the, the trustee is going to work with you, right? Yeah. Steve, let me, let me ask a question on this one. So take that first one, the one on White Street, Shirley, the mm -hmm. payment cash last what number one is we said was was august and going backwards right now going vertically on that on that on that uh, column the um if you look at uh cash let's say on row 11 that a uh, column 11 um that's obviously for whatever month that is but then you've got the one with twelve hundred dollars that is multiple months i assume so they're not it's not the same month vertically is that right it is a catch-up payment made in that month so then it might not be yeah agreed so cash 12 where it is the preceding month of 11 on the top one is not the preceding month on that 1200 dollar row it is the it is the calendar preceding month so they did make payments. So that because that, that that reads to me that she made extra payments on that one, and it wasn't a catch up payment, which is what you're saying. Well, she had she would have had. There's a we can go in we can go into Pacer and go read her schedule and do all that. She was we were pumping along at about four or five hundred dollars a month, right? Right, right. Then let me make sure I highlight it. Okay, so it's defaults. It's it's um, um the payment isn't sufficient to cover that. So it's a it's a, a rolling uh, arrears. Yes. So so what happens is, well, and the Bessemer this this the the Philadelphia loan is just a, a, it's it's COVID. It's this. It's that. It's it's whatever. Um, so she was pumping along, doing pretty well. You know, 200, then 700, then 400, then 400. Uh-oh, 165, um, 400, 1,200 to get some money on the table. And now we, now she's gone back and uh, readjust. She's gone back and modified her plan down to this $260 payment. So she's gone back. She's, you're supposed to be in a, you're supposed to be in a chapter 13 plan no more than five years. Right. And so she has extended this plan. She's, you know, I don't know what her balance is, but the point, the point, the point is, is unless you're prepared to do this, to do this fight, you've got to, um, you, you've got to have people that are going to do it for you. And mm -hmm. so even me having, again, having run a legal the collection department for all that time, I'm, it's just, I got, I got other stuff to do than try to make this lady behave. Right. Right. Um, oh, string code. Same thing as up above last 12 months, counting backwards, zero means current one is one past due. Two is two past due. Uh, Z is out of, out of range. Um, you'll see nines sometimes um, because you can't have a number bigger than nine and a single digit. And nines could be 10, 11, 12, 20 months past due. And so, so to come back to what we started with, this is the meat and potatoes of the tape. Knowing, knowing what the payment string is, really understanding the, pay flow, the, the payments made back compared to the current principal balance because you're going to have to recalculate what the uh, what's what's owing and make sure that the tape is right right make sure that this the principal and interest payment matches all the other numbers are there still 22 months left on this payment are there 60 months left does it because you can be off it's very easy to be off a month because i could be talking about last month and you could be talking about this month and it's very easy to lose a four or five hundred dollar payment in the in in the in the deal uh structure um you um what do you see in terms of documentation 
you should see a, an electronic Dropbox or box file with all of the documents. And in there, you want to make sure that there's the original note. So you'll see that it, there was a recorded note. Um, you want to uh, make sure that the, uh, you go to the county record and make sure that it's still valid and it hasn't been, uh, the property hasn't been lost to a tax sale. Um, the, uh, especially when you're looking at delinquent accounts. Um, what else do you need to know out of the file? Um, the credit application is interesting if you're, you know, if you come from that world like I do. Um, where did they start, right? Where, where did they start? Or, you know, where was, people don't go too far from where they start. Um, you know, do they have a good job? You know, how old are they? You know, what's, what's the circumstances on their likelihood of staying? Or if you're buying delinquent notes, what you're really after is trying to buy paper, trying to buy, trying to buy houses at a discount. And this is, you know, it's it's a way, it's kind of like forcing your own short sale. You know, so um, I think again for me, this is um, paper stack with a C, paper S T A C. Uh, is a reputable trade uh, desk to find uh, to find accounts. Um, Chris Savini, S E V E N E Y, Seven E Investments. Um, I think he's a solid citizen. Um, Dan Deppen. Um, I don't know his company, but he has a pretty straightforward, from what I've seen, uh, note buying course. Um, the places I go, the places I learn um, is a group called Paper Source. Um, a, um, is a particular guy there named um, um, Tom Henderson. Um, and uh, he is uh, he is just a character and you know he's got me, you know, got me doing stuff about you know, like, well, if I prepay three, can I have a fourth one free? You know, like at everything I do just for fun. Um, and uh, um, I go to uh, a group called Masters of Real Estate. Uh, it has an annual meeting in Las Vegas. Um, Gary Johnston with a T um, teaches a financial freedom class, uh, Memorial Weekend in Atlanta and uh, Labor Day Weekend in Southern California. And one of these days, I'm going to drag Ladesha there with me um, because, you know, I, you know, she, if she learns what I do, then she's not going to need me. And that'd be great. You know, um, you know, we're, uh, uh, she has an opportunity to buy two houses from somebody who is, is this the one with the two houses or the, no, the other one, um, somebody who bought a house uh, years ago, house has been damaged, taxes are passed due. Um, the uh, owner just wants, just wants to get out with what they put in. Um, and I want them to do that too, but it's too skinny. Um, uh, oh, and uh, uh, I've already just posted, it's uh, Fusion Notes. Yeah, Fusion Notes. Um, Dan, like I said, Dan's, Dan's a, uh, Dan came in about the same time I did, maybe six, eight years ago. Um, I think he's got an engineering kind of background, so he's very, he's very methodical and uh, and numbers oriented. But anyway, um, there's lots of information out there. Um, I do this because I'm not selling anything, um, and because I've been sold too many things, um, and so I, I stay away from the big shops. Um, there's some, there's, there's no barrier to entry in notes. You don't need a license. You don't need a broker registration. You don't need a real estate uh, license. You can just say, I'm a note broker. Um, and people, people sell notes they don't own all the time. You know, so um, those of us that are at this, those of us in this room likely don't have millions of dollars. Um, and we don't need to be buying from the big commercial places. We, we just need we just need a few deals. Um, uh, David wants to know if I've heard anything about note carry. Um, I've been when I started. I went to note carry. Um, I went to um, another one, and I found them. 
I found them pitch fests. Everybody was selling something. Um, but that was valuable to me because people then are teaching me what it is that I'm supposed to be afraid of. What am I supposed to be worried about? Why, why they're, you know, why they're best. I'm clearly, I'm a salesman, right? You know, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a contractor. I just talk. Um, and so I fit well in those rooms. Um, like I said, I passed on speaking uh, at a conference just because it just, it's not what I, you know, six years ago, I would have gone, yeah, here I go. Um, I, you know, I need, I need Ladesha to get 10 houses. Uh, I need my projects in uh, Pensacola to get going. Um, um, uh, Ivor and I may do something where he is, um, I think his market is going to have lots of turmoil and that's the time to be active. You know, there's, I think there's, you know, he's in, uh, I have, uh, I have 15 um, people that I'm doing uh, to other kind of financing with and for, you know, buying, uh, buying small dollar real estate and flipping quick, doing some of that. Um, we're buying, uh, we're buying buying some semi rural land, pulling in power and power in a and a uh, well and and adding value. So you know, so I'm I'm willing to do. It's the same kind of same kind of rehab as a project for Ladesha. I'm going to buy buy five acres in rural uh, uh, Minnesota, um, dig a well, pull pull power to it, and triple the price. You know, because it's all ready to go for somebody to put their cabin on. Um, you know, so that's. But is the world going to change? Yeah, I think for sure the world's going to change. You know, and so. But, uh, so anyway, um, I'm over my hour. I babbled way too much. Um, I have you, a quick question. Go ahead. Um. So. <laughs> I think I may be, so I listen to YouTube to learn things about financial education and real estate, um, not knowing absolutely anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm online listening to people like um, Lynette Zhang and uh, Robert Kawasaki and, and um, you know, and, and some of these guys. Um, and the, you know, I'm using their language and I've had someone say, you know, those people are wealthy, you know, you're not wealthy. So why are you listening um, to such people? And I don't know um, who else to, who, who else to really listen to and, and understand what, um, my next steps should mm -hmm. should be. I'm I'm totally um, building even like a foundation for myself. Um, I'm a care provider for my mom, and I'm in the process of of getting my financial footing um, with a little small business. So, which who would you recommend? Is um, any you know Steve? or anyone else, um, who should someone for the small guys who are trying to um, build a small foundation for themselves or a foundation period, starting small and then building up, is there anyone that you would like to recommend? So um, the, some, of the folks, some of the folks that I've named, particularly Gary Johnston, um, he has some good stuff. Um, it's, it's, there's so many good ideas that it's overwhelming. And every, everything you hear is, that's a great idea if it works, but it's got to, it has to fit. You know, it has to fit. There's some things that, some things I can do and other things that just don't light me up and I, and I don't want to do it. Um, so the, when I talk with folks about this, it's um, first, First is let's get our financial um, house in order. Let's uh, let's explore what austerity and um, oh, I I've always wants me to go back to the uh, go back to the little note again. Um, I will okay because because that's like real work. So I'm not a life coach. 
I don't believe in life coaches. I believe in getting my fingers, you know, getting my hands dirty. Um, I believe that the most powerful thing you can have is grit and be able to persevere and grind until you get something to get to get what you want. Um, I see way too many people that want to make 50% on their money. And, and I wonder, well, if you're going to be in the mortgage game, you're going to make, want to make 50%. That means somebody else is going to have to give up that 50%. And they've been at it a long time. Um, distressed, distressed note funds where you just give somebody your money and they give you a return are paying seven, 8%. Uh, you know, it's better than the bank. And then when they have a success, then you get a little payout too. So maybe you make six, seven, zero, if the notes go bad, then a 15 or a 20. And it's this, you know, it's, you know, it all adds up. I think money basically has like a value of like inflation rate of like maybe 7%, a, you know, is about what money does if you work with it. Um, everything else, you've got to add some, you've got to add some muscle and some sweat. Um, you know, and I like Ladesha being here um, because she's a couple years on the road ahead of you, right? Um, I see, I see people, I see people offering financial advice on TikTok. I'm too old to know what TikTok is. I don't know how you can get financial advice in 90 seconds. I, you know, I think all that is is a commercial to give somebody some money to pay for some training. There's tons of free training. Um, if you're starting out, notes is not where you want to be. Notes is notes are for people that have money and want to sit and be lazy, uh, you know, or they're trying to they're trying to balance out a portfolio of I've got some of this, some of that, and I should have some I should have some more in you know, a place in some a place in real estate. Um, I don't know what your superpower is, um, but uh, I put my I put my email uh, in the chat. Um, we can take a whack at this sometime if you want, but again, I'm not, I don't, I don't do coaching of any kind. I just, there, this is, this is my coaching. Um, okay. Um, so, Thank you. Um, okay. So if there was a magic bu bullet, if there was a magic button, we'd have all pressed it. Right. Um, I'm not much of a Kiyosaki fan, but I agree with his four quadrants. Um, so um, although I do think his, you know, his cash flow board game is a great way to learn real estate. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful way to real real estate. And if you can find, where do you live? I'm in um, California. Okay. Right. Um, in, in Inland Empire and other places in California, real estate, bozos like me, run cash flow games to find uh, new investor money. Um, it's a way to go to, go to, yeah, you're in California. Find your local real estate investment association, your local RIA, and go hang out. Go hang out. Somebody will find, you'll find something that you can do for somebody, and that's how you start learning. Mm -hmm. If you don't have money, find a deal. Find a deal where you need some money, right? <laughs> so You said my local RIA, and what did that stand for again, please? Uh, real Estate Investor Association. Okay. Or a Phoebe for investor by investor association. You can find like you find this one on Meetup. You can find them on Meetup. Um, Bill Tan uh, has been running one in LA for decades, and he uh, offers some marvelous free training. Um, I got Ladesha to uh, I signed Ladesha up with a Central Ohio Real Estate Education Association. Um, why neither of us in Ohio? Why? Because the lady that runs that organization really has her act together and has tons of free content. Uh, Ladesha Ladesha and I are going to be doing lease options. Uh, uh, Ladesha, we're going to be doing lease options, okay? okay. Uh, that's how we're going to get that house. Uh, <laughs> okay? We're not going to give them any money. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so we'll pick that up. So there, there, there's a little clue. How do you buy something without any money? Right? So, um, Come back when you have an idea that you really like. Send me an email, and you know maybe we chew on it and see if it really works or not. But I want to get back to I want to get back. It's seven thirty my time. 
um, I have somebody upstairs that would like me to stop working. Um, I'm going to go back and I didn't hang up on everybody, did I? Oh, good. All right. I'm going to go back to the note. Um, so we started this, con the reason that uh, I've always here is we started this conversation with, um, he wants, he, you know, he's looking to find a way to walk into the note business and get to feel it a little bit. And goodness gracious, this one, this loan that this is the, the little rural Indiana one started it $80,000 at 11% interest, 15 years, 180 months. She's made 13 years of payments. She is the only way she's going to stop paying is she dies, right? Right. So, <laughs> so, you know, so here, here it is with a current principal balance of 55, 24, 76. It pays 11% interest. Yeah, right? You know, how, I, I, how do I discount that? That's, that's what it is. It's, this, is, this is exactly what you're hunting, hunting for is a steady payer at 11%. You know, so are the banks, right? <laughs> so my interest rates are up to six and a half now, right? The only thing that would make this bad is if she decided to pay it off. So, so 55, so how do you buy this? How do you buy this? Um, there's a purchase and sale agreement that goes back and forth. You list the uh, attributes, um, the, the legal description of the property. You dig out the file out of my Dropbox that has all of the documents again. Um, we get loan servicing and then <coughs> the buyer has to have another loan servicer to send this to. Because it's owner-occupied, the federal government requires that you have a license to service that loan, right? It's the, it's the whole game of, you know, we're protecting people, but we're, you know, really just, you know, keeping a box around what we do, right? So, um, so you'd go in, if you were brand new, you'd go to FCI, or ever or evergreen or Madison management decide which one of those was the right uh, uh, one for you and you'd start opening up an account you'd find out what the fees are and then you come back and figure out is really a five thousand dollar note the right place to start um, and then you'd have to figure out how to pry it out of my hands <laughs> you know um, and I'm I'm okay with it you know I said these I'm down to the um, you know, yeah, I'm down here, you know, maybe, maybe this one's better, you know, this is, maybe this one's better, the last, let's see, what's this one, $27,000, oops, <laughs> Steve, is it not more cost effective, you, you alluded to this at the start, in this case, because yeah. of the onboarding fees, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, might just be more simple to keep it with the existing servicer, Right. And you can you can certainly open an account with Security National. They'd be happy to keep it. That would be better for the now that now now that we're reminding me how this works, that's better for the borrower. Because as loans or mortgages are sold, there's this exchange that has to happen where you lose a month. All the time you lose a month. I'm going to close it out in, in, in October. You're going to start it in November. The borrower is out there with a $300 payment saying, somebody please take my money, right? And, and so it's just, you know, it's, it's just a mess. Um, you could certainly turn this on with Security National. They have a very easy process where they send the hello, they send the goodbye and the hello letter, which is the vernacular in the, in the industry. The goodbye letter says, I'm sold your loan to, I've, I've sold your loan, Steve sold your loan to Ivar. And then the next letter is, comes from uh, Ivar says, Ivar says, I bought this loan from Steve, this balance, this payment, all these things. Are you ready to sign your new auto pay agreement? They handle all that borrower signs, easy peasy, nothing to it. And then you get $351 a month, less a servicing fee, and, and off you go. I don't know that you learn anything, um, but you've, you know, you've bought a note, 
Um, I was looking at this one with the $27,000 balance and that payment string has been good. Here, so here's a case where they missed this month. It looks like they missed this month. What they actually did was pay early, okay. right? So that that's my kind of borrower, right? Borrower who pays early. Um, in our day business, um, well, let's, let's quick. And see, um, I'm going to stop share, go back to um, my Zillow, drop that in. It's the fastest way to find something, right? I'll go back and share that. So that note's got a $27,000 balance. Um, share screen, share screen, share screen. And I'm tired. Um, there. That note's got a $27,000 balance. We'll agree that Zestimate is, when we say wrong, you said, I've already said wrong, it's only right 30% of the time. What's the range of that? 5%, 20%? If there's um, a, if there's a twenty seven percent no twenty seven thousand dollar note against a hundred and sixty thousand dollar estimate, it's probably okay. I think it's a very low risk. Yeah, you know we you know we're we're in the ballpark. When I'm funding um, flips, I try to stay really close to wholesale value, right? So we're going to buy something for fifty that we think we're going to sell for a hundred, right? So I've only put in fifty. My risk is it may be worth, you know, that a hurricane could hit it. That happened. Um, and things, you know, it may take a while for it to get, you know, may go to 40, but it's not going to go to zero. There's always the lot, you know, and uh, David touched on that. I've got comps in the area, 160, 220, 185. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's Indianapolis. It's, uh, it's, it's okay. It's 100, you know, so it's. Not going to be a great house, right? It's only got a three hundred and fifty dollars mortgage on it, but it it has uniform. And this is where Zillow's estimate does work: is you've got uniformity. You've got the same lot size again and again and again. You've got the same vintage. You've got the same. You you you're there. It's cookie cutter, right? It's easy. It's e much easier to appraise. Right? You know, so so that. That loan is a common kind of more common kind of loan that you'll see in the market. Um, than the little five thousand dollar one. Um, the five thousand dollar, well, I don't I don't do a lot of my again, again, our standard business is five thousand dollar loans. So I'm not trying I'm trying not to do more of those. Um, but the note that I had up on my screen before was a $7,500 loan that I'm going to buy half of. Right? So really all the note seller wants, this it's not owner occupied, um, really all the note seller wants is he doesn't want to pay somebody a management fee and he knows that I can stick it in my computer and take care of it. So he's willing to discounted, you know, a thousand dollars for me to collect half the payments and then then decide what to do with the second half. So I haven't looked at this in so long. I was surprised at um, how little uh, is left of this portfolio. There's only uh, only $150,000 left. Um, and uh, for the main, you know, what, what have I earned? I've earned a gross, you know, maybe north of 10. I'm in a gross, you know, 10% range, but after fees, really what I've gotten is, you know, probably eight, right? So, but it was, I said it was 26 loans all bought at once. It's been paying off. It's been, some of the check, some of the months for a while were really big um, and it's been paying off all this time, you know, so. So it's not a bad, it's, it's not, you know, it's, I'm talking against what I was saying. It's not a bad thing. It works. 
It's just, you know, I think he can do better. You know, I think you can, with a little little elbow grease, you can do better. I think I think Corinthia can do better. Right? So, so but uh, but no, Ivar, if you want to sit, if you want to sit on your, uh, if you if you want to sit on your hands and just have three hundred fifty dollars a month come in, you know, okay, sure, <laughs> you know, sure, that's not bad, you know. Like I said, we you know we do this. We do this, you know, on the day job times a thousand every month. You know? So it, it, I, I can't, I shouldn't uh, poo poo it. It's, you know, been paying my bills for my cripes my whole adult life. So, Steve, oh. one last question for you. Yeah. You know, this development, this residential development that we're putting together, yeah. um, which is 18 townhomes we're going to build. Um, how could, or for a future webinar, could you do a presentation to show how you could create these notes? Do you, mm -hmm. do you understand what I mean? And use that as an example. Mm -hmm. If you go, if you go back um, to go to my YouTube channel, go back two months. There's one where I talk about a hundred thousand dollar note that I took uh, on a property um, that will show you some of the mechanics of that um i'm this that's so there there you have bought something for x you have applied elbow grease to it and now it's worth this and financing that at six percent or whatever um right. is is a, is a wonderful idea because that six percent really is probably 25 when you look at your basis versus your exit mm -hmm. There's risk in owner occupied. There's absolutely risk in owner occupied. There's risk in new construction, as you know that you know that you know if there's a defect, uh, you know a, a construction uh, engineering defect that will live with you forever, right? Mm -hmm. Twenty years from now, a wall falls in, you know that kind of thing. Um, the it fits the model that I like. I'm trying to get some asymmetrical return. Because you're buying something here, doing something to improve it, and then capitalizing on that. Mm -hmm. um, you you mentioned uh, you you tri I had a conversation with Ladesha. You meant you put a bug in my ear about I've been forgetting to find out. I'm looking at a senior care project in in Pensacola, and there's government money there, and I just have to go find the right department to go ask for it. I think I found mine today. They came and saw me and threw, threw 450,000 grants on it. Yeah. And, and, and that's exactly the, for exactly the right reasons. It's, you know, we're helping people that we're helping the right people for the right reasons. And we ought to get a little government support, which in, again, increases the yield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we did some, we, Ladesha and I participated in some, uh, workshop kind of things that were going on in her town and i came away from that i called the people the presenters i tried to get something going and it was just all a gov build a government thing ladesha lives in a very blue collar low income area and this the town the city their goal was to build 25 new houses for three hundred thousand dollars a piece Mm -hmm. That was their entire save their city plan. Mm -hmm. And, and I was, I was just find, trying to find somebody to yell at and I couldn't get anybody. Um, <laughs> you know, what Ladesha does is find entry level property, rehab it, put a section eight single mom and kids in it so that there's a roof over people's heads. So she's meeting people where they are. It's a poor town. She's meeting people where they are. I want to meet seniors where they are with a home that they can afford you know that's which is, what, right which, stuff. Is, which is my target market yeah yeah i you know i just uh, we're, we're this project's in pensacola it's the largest naval air station in the country there's the town's full of retired navy people some of them just need 700 square feet to live out their days you know so i want to go build 10 houses and if i can get the city of pensacola or the state of florida to kick in a little bit of money I'm good for it, you know. So. Great. So that's that. 
All right. Okay. Uh, wherever you guys are, it's later than it is here. Um, but I said I need to. I need. I need to go upstairs. Go upstairs and say hi to my wife. All right. All right. Um, I put my email in the uh, in the chat. Um, I'll talk about this all day, all night. Right. So. So. All right. And John, good to see you again. All right. Oh, you're welcome, Adesha. All right. Okay. Thanks, David. All righty. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna post this up on uh, YouTube. Um, you guys can watch it there. There's two years worth of babbling by me, but in the meantime, thanks for being here. Have a good night. All right. What What is your yeah. YouTube channel, Steve? It's my name, Steve Hodge. Okay, got okay. it. And this is this is as professional as it gets. Got you. Right. All manner of stuff on there. You know, mostly I try to every time I have a failure, I try to make sure I talk about it. Perfect. Okay. All right. Have a great evening. Bye -bye. Thanks, folks. Okay. All right. I will talk soon. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.